Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think it's about time we can review another Vince Lee review. This time around, we can talk about none other than the, one of my all-time favorite movies, and personally, one of the, the his movies I watched as a kid, Harry the Spy. Yes, folks, I basically want to talk about, maybe a little personal about the film itself, and my experience basically watching it, and of course, Richard, why this movie has been one of my all-time favorites. So that's what we're going to talk about today on the Friends of Being Reviews. Welcome back. Okie dokie. Well, what can I say about Harry the Spike? It's probably been one of the most unknowing and known based on fictional books of of all time. Thanks to, of course, the reviews we excuse. Uh, I guess the version of my thoughts were about the book and generally, and the film of simultaneously, it's quite not the same version as the book which it tells it. Now, the reason why I mention this, and the reason why I'm telling you this, is because, well, the book itself is actually pretty well a little bit more kind of harsh version in many ways, especially. I mean, there are some moments that you find it very well fascinating which about reading it. Now, we do see the part, Richard, that we all know that a young, disability 11 year old girl who wants to become as a writer. And, of course, she basically goes around in her neighborhood in New York City, basically despise around her, basically, uh, relatives, well, not relatives, but spies around uh, her neighborhood and then she, like, you know, basically write down everything that she knows in her trusted, basically, little notebook. Now, for me, how I got involved with basically reading it, the book was somehow originally a pretty much got to me understanding about writing, uh, journaling, and everything else. Originally, because back in the early course of the '90s, I used to wrote my own kind of uh, spy notebooks back in that time, and you know, I kind of like find this book very well interesting to be to, to me, which is basically understand about how contributor reacts when they are feel emotional or feel kind of like lonely or basically don't have really this no communicating whatsoever with their friends it's pretty obvious why this book is pretty much generated to me to understand about the meaning about basically as a child but the only thing I will say about good about the about the film itself is there are some elements which that you find very well uh, uh, fascinating with which you know of course in a scene wherein you know, we see trusted little bit character sport play by I forgot what his name was, but he plays by the character which was somewhere which plays that guy which or whatever his name is. But he goes to the base in the uh, local food uh, uh, grocery store, and he's basically of course paying his um, groceries like his milk, his cheese, and all the stuff so that he's basically trying to pay off to basically buy some food for his father and everything else. And it's pretty obvious that. You look at the characters very well listed because you know, for Harriet, she's more as the the, the know-it-all, trying to know everything about what's going on in the world and everything else. And she wants to because you know everything that she knows by simply write down in her notebook. Uh, for Sport uh, himself, he's more as a kind of like the main kind of basically supporting character who just basically you know tried to be supportive and everything else, which they. And of course, basically living on him with his uh, uh, basically his divorced father, who was becoming as a writer himself, realized that he's trying to help out with the basic with the bills, with of course with the cooking and everything else. Which you know, everybody day in life originally do that originally in their own life. For myself, I do that originally too, originally because uh, for my own personal reference of my own life, I used to be like that kind of way because you know, me and my mother never had much money. Uh, back in the time version when I was getting a little bit older, we never had much basically uh, uh, more food version based on the table. Version. I mean, we wasn't really poor, poor. We wasn't seriously was poor and loneliness and of course uh, homeless. We were simply trying to live by day by day, virtually everyday life by saving enough money for food and basically, of course, pay the bills. Because 
you know, of course, Richard, for support him being as a supporting character, I really find him very well relatable because, you know, for everyday life that we live in, uh, we always have a moment that we are just basically, unmentionally, just cannot afford enough for other people that we basically are, of course, basically generated from what it comes around. So, for the book, I really find it very well, you know, find me to read because it's not just basically, you know, the the temper tantrum, the face of a child, which is a very well driven base of this story. Because Ruiz Rescue is basically saying that the characters, like of course Harriet, you know, she's very well, you know, bullied, uh, I don't want to say bullied, but also being real, uh, like herself, and basically was fooled herself by simply actually kind of really go on with Mason this basically doing things on her own. Because, you know, of course, back in uh, in the early 60s, you know, Ruiz was trying to, of course, turn a story that, you know, many children can actually really can relate to, or, you know, can parents really can advise how children react to other children originally towards age and, and, and uh, gender. And it's pretty obvious that the story is quite driven. The only thing I will base it about bad thing about it is, is because we do see Harriet have these temper tantrums, like she is, of course, she's causing the basic news of work. Certain language that probably maybe child never should never should have. Uh, basically going to a psychotherapist. I mean, there's a psychotherapist, both the book and the movie simultaneously, because I mean, you don't really have that kind of way which with many other children's books, which is because, you know, we least she's very well considered well a sort of writer who is trying to get inside the material of the child. And and I think that's what driven to me when I saw reading it and I was very well kind of fascinated of it. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that she's really going on and focus on recently, even if she is basically have uh, much more common sense with, between basically the parents and the basically child himself. So for my theory based of based of towards the book and the movie, it's sort of like really just basically having your kids trying to learn from the experience and basically have an and dance with the experience about, you know, meeting and being dealing with life and actually have a corporate base with your family and friends. Now, I will say for the movie, on the other hand, is that it's pretty obvious that it's very well similar sort of towards the book. But here's the difference. I don't think you, that books don't really follow the, uh, follow the movie follow the terms of taste because the books are very well driven towards it, especially for, uh, for Harry Potter. I mean, Harry Potter has been very well contributed to the popularity towards the books and very well getting a ton of basically of franchise result based on the movies. But I'll get to that version into the another thing later version on recently. But the real thing I will say about the movie is I can say it's very obvious that you don't get a driven movies uh, somewhat like this towards the book. While the movie is more really some of the elements of basic fun and just goofiness and just, you know, a little bit of uh, whack and a little bit of sadness which is scenes that you're watching, it's pretty well driven which is just a little bit. The only thing of difference about the movie is just because there are some parts that are not really a kind of like moon to me. And I know a lot of people who have watched the movie and basically read the book simultaneously don't necessarily how to take a chance to just basically, you know, tell the children originally that, you know, even when you are different, you feel kind of different, you feel kind of odd machines in, in your way. Because Harriet, Harriet and, you know, and other basically uh, characters in the book and the film itself are quite different versions in so many ways. Like, of course, we have uh, the boy with the purple socks who is very well never talks very eventually until they at the end of the movie and the end of the book. It's pretty obvious that he does speak up his mind about how he feels about you know, Harriet has become as a great sort of writer. You know, she maybe wrote very bad things all the things in her notebook, but you know, she basically is, of course, as an average of a child, she's basically learning this kind of experience. And I think that's quite really interesting to me, Richard, from my understanding. Because not even often you don't have a sort of certain feel based on towards base of the characters. But here's the thing I, I hate about Richard that they did in the film. Now we all know in the actual story 
in release story, we do see, you know, of course, Rachel and Henry, Rachel and uh, Marion uh, have, you know, very well of friendship, you know. Because in the actual story, uh, Marion was, well, I guess, Rachel Henderson actually took Carrie's notebook while they were just playing in the park and playing tag and everything else. That was actually in the story. But in the film, the actual film is actually quite different, Richard. Now, a lot of people find it the very well kind of like a nitpick Richard way that it's supposed to be Rachel Henderson again in Harriet's notebook, not uh, Marion. But it plays in both ways because you do get that uh, same element of the scene in the book because in that way you do have that Richard Insurance remit to it. But the big thing that I like about it necessarily is that you have that unmentioned feel of seeing two characters that basically in the natural story are very well in the story are actually in a different type of area. So I I think that the director uh I forgot what her name was to direct this movie. But she was playing and she wanted to make it a little different twist to make it more friendly and a little bit more kind of like different between the book version because, you know, the book is very well just for short storytelling. And it very well kind of this basically will kind of work, but in a very well, in a very, this kind of, do it in a very different way. So for that, it's pretty obvious that you don't get that Richard scene basically in the book. Now, while the book, it really falls love Richard, there are some basic characters that they forgot to let off in the actual story. Like, of course, we have the Robinson characters. The Robinson, you know, uh, you know, couple are actually just into, you know, into all the perfect things, have a perfect house, perfect uh, couch, and everything else, all this perfect life they had originally, and that spends something towards the book. While in the film, it didn't it never mention that originally. But, to be realistically, there was a big version that, you know, the director was going to try to put, you know, the Robinson Company uh, couple in the film. But, to be fair and to be all honestly, it didn't work out very well often. So, we just basically got the basically main characters, like of course we have, we do have of course, you know, Harriet's parents, of course the children of course, um, Sport, Janie, uh, Rachel Henderson, uh, Marion Hawthorne, uh, Pinky Whitehead, I'll get to Pinky Whitehead originally, hopefully, Boy with Purple Socks, um, Carrie Anthony, um, what was originally, uh, <laughs> Laura Peterson, of course, and Beth Ellen, and of course we have the world of lovely teacher, Miss is Miss Elson, and of course Old Gully, which is basically the main character. And we have also basically other basic characters that many people find that very well. Which, there are some characters that they forgot to left out. Of course, um, I don't know what his name was, but he's actually the character originally in the story that he's basically eating so much food and in the back and trying to basically not to have out with the, of course, the basically um, Franken's parents uh, who run the basically. Uh, Hong Kong uh, food uh, uh, grocery uh, department, and in the actual basic story, it does play that way with because we do see, of course, uh, uh, the Hong Kong's uh, family. You know, Jackie, I mean, I mean Frankie. I have to say, I don't know how to basically say Jack, uh, uh, Frankie, who is trying to, of course, uh, want to borrow the, uh, pa his, uh, his parents' truck, and actually, of course, basically ran the truck which are over for some reason in the actual story and actually in the film actually getting yourself a Richard in car wreck. And it's pretty obvious that seeing that really scene originally, it's pretty well, you know, very well driven. Just, just, just check it out. You probably will enjoy it and probably will understand about the difference between uh, the actual scene in that, that way. But I think the one character I was very kind of fond with basically, and this was kind of really, I was really interested in too, because um, this is not how often that you get Richard there's so many good characters you could relate to. Like, of course, Sport, I could relate to him because he's more as the the man of the house who's trying to, of course, do the clean, do the uh, do the cooking, and of course, do the of course the bills that he basically wants to become as a CPA, which is a you know counterfeit you know person who makes sure that keep tracks of the money, which, which is you know that's playing towards basically and towards the book and towards the film simultaneously. And uh, of course, but that really being said, it's pretty obvious that many people find that sport was never really the main purpose of the character. He actually has his own book 
He's actually own book. If you have definitely checked this book out, it's pretty well done and really I haven't read it originally. I know it's quite really an interesting book, and I love to basically have that originally in my collection. But really, this the only thing I'm just very kind of fond of is basically just the uh, Harry itself, originally. which you know I can really get late to her, to her because you know back in the early '90s, I was always kind of like finding myself of what I want to do with my life as of course when you're a child you don't know how you basically corporate is to enjoy yourself and how you basically you know find yourself in your way. That doesn't mean I wasn't antisocial. I was just basically, you know, social in my own way, which of course having family around or because having you know, relatives around, whatever, it just it just kinda goes shows that I just kinda wake towards my own self and in in my own personal uh, life. And pretty much obvious why I think it is pretty uh, that got to me reading this book, and it got to me to understand about, of course, about the meanings about the means of life. Uh, but generally speaking, it wasn't really because I didn't thought it really had a very wonderful, basically happy on on happy life. It was just because you know I had a steady, slow, crazy pace of life which I had which on my own. So, yeah. But the real question is, I'd like to basically mention for you guys, basically who ever read this book and watched the movie simultaneously is that the movie is not quite good. I mean, it is good in some parts when you're watching it and actually understand the Bible originally and generally. But, to be fair, it's quite a little bit of difference because while the book is really straightforward and actually a little bit understanding about each character basically goes along with the story, the movie is just played for fun. And that's not a bad thing, but the only thing I find pretty obvious is that sometimes you don't know if you relate to these characters in the film. Because while we least Miss Goose was trying to write a good a bit of a children's book, you know, trying to explain how, of course, to the parents who why children are basically acting this way and becoming this, you know, this big this, you know, being so a mind reason, being so you know, childish, and actually becomes so much hatred on themselves. It's pretty obvious nowadays is this going to show today we're just having more children just basically sending them off to the boot camp. But that's not the whole base I'm saying. The whole point is that originally it's a, she's explaining to, you know, the parents and the children itself is that sometimes when you're a child, you feel kind of different. You feel kind of odd, originally. And that's really, I think, I find the story very well fascinating, originally. While the movie, it just played for laughs, it just played for just for having fun, and of course, it does really give it a very well interesting to really to see it, to see the characters how they react, how they react to other characters. Uh, but I think that scene which when we see all the children basically in the park while they read Harriet's notebook, you know, reading all the negative uh, stuff that she wrote about them and everything else, and you know. While that really is sort of kind of like true in many ways, it doesn't really play that much often well. And I think that's a main problem for both the movie and the book. While the book, it actually very well strong and very well heartbreaking moment because, you know, we do see, of course, old Gully is left town. We see, you know, Harriet lost in her precious notebook by the tire base of the kids that are reading the, basically the negative stuff that she's broken about them. And we see her basically get so emotional and so deeply in pain. And even basically so hatred on herself. Even she even goes to the psychotherapist that even she looks at the psychotherapist thinking, why would I basically want to basically go to a psychotherapist when I'm clearly just basically upset because A, I'm growing up, B, I'm losing my, of course, my limits, and you just don't have no appreciation for what I do. I mean, you know, in the story, her parents really try to understand her, but it's very well obvious that she is a completely different person. And that's what I think this, the book, Jeremy Simon that Reese was explaining to people who, uh, back in the 60s, were trying to understand, is that it's not it's just because the typical young, typical eleven-year-old girl is trying to become as a writer and want to have goals and dreams of life, and, and you know it, it goes to show you that it's not just based on this that. It just basically shows that a character has to change she, he or she or her limits, and it, it's pretty obvious that many base of, of fictional characters that we read in today, it's pretty obvious that we are so much have much different lives. 
different ginger, different you know, uh, 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 food that we eat or whatever, it, it goes to show you that, explain to that towards a story, it really kind of brings down to basis of the people. And you know, of course, and maybe kind of you know, teach people a lesson, which is back then. But the one thing I really do, did not understand, and this is something my theory originally towards my understanding about the book and the film generally, is that when Harriet gets her letter with O'Gully and tells basically her friends and other children basically that sometimes you have to lie, otherwise you will lose a friend. Little lies do not hurt people would make them feel. Like for instance, like you cook something that people would make for you and you don't like it. So for yourself, you will always tell the truth. Which I never understand that. But here's the thing, there is a point that you can tell a lie and make some minor, minor changes in your life. Even if you are hurting somebody's feelings or basically feel like they're not really uh, generally basically uh, like this kind of thing, it is kind of hard to lie Virginia, in some ways. So, to my sense, she did really tell the truth. She did really, of course, apologize. But she probably lied basically because she understand that she is continuing basically just writing about whatever it comes to her mind. And when we write at that, write about other people or write about ourselves, we feel kind of different. We feel kind of like we want to, of course, to make things different for our lives. And I think that's generally why I'm doing this review because I want to explain to some people who don't even know much about the story itself because the story is very well driven and very well, you know, surprisingly, you know, feel to it because to me, it got to me understand about the meaning base of how people are different than me in life, how people react to base with other people, how people treat people other differently, how they just don't respect other people but they do. It just goes along to show you that we just are completely different human beings that we have no common morse of whatsoever of what to change our lives. So, that being said, it may be kind of harsh originally in my book and for my own us, uh, uh, representative of my own speaking, but to be fair, it's always about really just based, of course, try to basically get to know what the person feeling, how the people think, how the people really have misconfidence about it. So, yeah, I have no connection whatsoever what people think about me or basically don't have no issues about it. But the only thing I will have to say is it's pretty obvious not everybody is basically will be the same. Everybody has different life. Everybody has different ways in their own personal and basically their own way to basically live it. So, I see no convincing point for that. So yeah, I did talk about a little bit about myself and a little bit of how, you know, the basis of how the world has changed so much. I guess I didn't really actually talk about the other books, which of course, which I have, of course, Harriet Spied Again and I guess Along the Secret. Now, Along the Secret is quite really different, originally. I think the actual story that, you know, we see, we see Harriet and Beth Ellen spend a summer vacation with one another and actually, you know, try to see what's going on in the neighborhood there because, you know, they spend time with another trying to get to know each other and everything else. And I think it's actually the fear of the future basically before Harriet starts really explaining herself and actually why she wants to become as a writer and why she's spying uh, about her around the neighborhood. So that explains a lot, Richard, towards the basic in uh, the second book, which I quite recommend for anybody who can just check it out and actually really enjoy it. Uh, for Spies Again, it's quite a, not as a sequel, but as a prequel. I see it as a prequel because, you know, when you read it, it it's very well driven and very well to see, of course, Old Gully coming back originally in the face of the prequel. So it really plays a lot. But the only thing I find pretty obvious which is we do see Harriet a little bit more understanding about her history of why she's you know, writing about these things that she wrote in her notebook and why she wants to become as a writer. Because she's so much working and busy with basically with uh, with so much thoughts that she wrote in her notebook. It's pretty obvious, very well driven, Richard, to me. And I only read it based about once, Richard, when it came out, I think it really came out in 2005 or 2006. 
I think the book came out originally sometime in that year, I don't remember. But the only thing I find pretty much about these, uh, the prequel, it's quite really driven if you read it originally. So definitely worth checking out originally. Uh, there is another Harry the Spy book, which is called Harry the Spy Double Agents, which I never read originally, and I don't know which I never heard much about being used of it. But I know it's quite really good, and I know it's quite very well, a little different in some ways. There's not much originally about Harriet a little bit often. She just basically goes around. Uh, the spying bases, of course, with the classmates and basically have, I guess, a double agent around their side, which I never read how much about it, but I know it's quite really interesting, and I'll definitely love to check that out. Now, have I ever seen the blog war, the, I guess, the pretty much remake of the Harry the Spy franchise uh, story? Well, I can say one thing about Bruce is about it, is that I think the one character has, you know, much more, I guess, a little bit more uh, scenes to do, and that was basically the actress who played Beth Ellen, and that's it. While Harriet's Spy Blog Wars, it featured based on a feature light uh, film. It was, of course, produced by, of course, Disney Channel, which I was never quite understanding why in the hell did they actually basically make a some kind of what a remake. Now, if they were going to remake a actual film, basically, maybe on the book, that's fine. I can understand that they're trying to do that. But why are you doing it in a feature like past? First of all, no one's going to basically block a very well considered story that no one's going to have interest. And B, I'm not going to get started basically talking about it because since I don't have it in my collection, I'm just explaining, explaining to you why I think I just never really understand why the film itself just doesn't have no driven to it and really doesn't play along with it because you know the actress play Harriet uh, Julia Stone I think that's her name is uh, not a bad actress but have a bad vision of her character have her base her characters is basically straightforward basically be as a spy spying around the neighborhood and then also blogs about it on her place of a blog like what but yeah I think that's the only thing that's the reason why I never really understand about it, and I'll never watch it ever again, because it's still just basically driven why I think it's never really interesting, and I don't know why people find it very well a, a good movie, and I, I just, I don't see it as a bad or horrible movie, it's just, it's a very complex movie, and it's not really making any much sense at all, especially with the characters that are not interesting funny, not interesting interesting, all they're just basically just very random based the supporting characters. The only spoke I can basically give is Beth Allen. The actress who play it. And that's it. So yeah, that's it for me and you for now. So until next time, this is Sarah Brown. Thank you for watching. And sign out.